All right, time to actually try this again. Um, this is like my fourth time already trying to do this part because I keep screwing up the scan jump at the beginning. Like, not for the full ten minutes, obviously, but like I get really sick of it because I can't do it after a few minutes. Anyway, I've done some messing with the quality on the computer, and actually I have to change it here too. I wanted to turn up the screen brightness. I messed with the saturation, and why can't I make that jump? I messed with the saturation and the sharpness, so hopefully it'll be a little less blurry and a little more colorful. Because last time was a little lacking. Anyway, here I'm showing how to do the jump if you can't do scan dashes. What you have to do is you have to lock onto this thing, then move out of the room and left a little bit. Because if this lock ever passes over the door after it closes, it's going to break. So you have to keep it to the side a little bit. Then you back up to your ship. If you can find it. Oh, wait, I think I'm, like, right on top of it. Yeah. Then you have to get to the corner, back up without losing the lock, which is easier said than done, because it breaks when you're back here. Yep, and there it goes. Okay, you just, basically, you just do the jump off of that. Anyway, here, I'm going to keep doing this until I freaking get it. Uh, instead of complaining about failing this jump a million times, I'll complain that my Dazzle stopped working again yesterday after I recorded the first part, because we were trying to do something with the quality, and then my computer randomly shut off, and when I turned it back on, the driver was corrupted, and we couldn't figure out how to freaking fix it. But I think it's all good now. And also, I'm recording the audio straight from Camtasia, not that anybody actually cares. But, oh, there we go. Finally made it. Yeah, you've just got to get a really good jump off that. It shouldn't be that hard, but for some reason I'm sucking at it. Then you just jump over here. And you can collect your space jump boots about... Well, I don't know, normally you get these about one-third through the game, and now you're getting them as your very first item. Which is very, very helpful. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save here just in case something goes horribly wrong. Uh, I, maybe I shouldn't have, but whatever. I, uh, oh yeah, one downside to using Camtasia to record instead of Audacity to get the audio is that now I have no timer, so I'm actually using the Snorlax timer on uh, Pokemon Pearl. I set it for 10 minutes and 55 seconds. Oh, right here. Ah, uh, oh crap. If you want to clear out these beetles, and like some of this, the blast caps and stuff, if you want to practice doing dash jumps off of this zoomer, it's a good target, because it's lots of open space and there's not really any way to get hurt. But anyway, enough lollygagging. I'm finally going to make some progress here. I hope. Of course the thing hits me. Okay, heading on to Chozo Ruins. Now, since I have the space jump boots already, things are going to be more open to me than they would be normally. Stupid door. Okay, nothing in here. Moving into the main plaza, which is a very interesting room. Uh, our first agenda here is to get missiles, which normally you'd have to fight the hive mecha to get, but since you have the double jump, you can just get missiles from here. Like, right, th you can just, you have to jump up this half pipe. Uh, it's not a normal double jump, though. That's not going to quite make it. What you have to do is called a ghetto jump which is when you hold L and you sort of rub up against the wall and move away from it while you jump, and for some reason it gives you extra height. But I'm not going to be getting that one, because I want to also show that it's possible to get another one if you get a jump up this tree, then jump over here, 
And then there's a kind of complex jump to this ledge over here. Hopefully I'm going to make it. Yeah, there's another one right there, which I'll go ahead and grab. And also from here, assuming I don't screw this up, you can get into a secret world, which is very useless but interesting. What you want to do is you want to jump onto that branch. Then jump onto this rock thing here. Then go up a le left a little bit and up. And from this point, you can jump out of the level's boundaries and wander around under the level. But once you do that, you're pretty much stuck. So it's generally not a good idea, although it is fun to play around with it. And if you have the Morph Ball, you can fall infinitely into the abyss. But yeah, I'm not going to do that because it might cause me to restart the game. Or require me to restart it, I mean. So... Now I'm going to be immediately picking up the Morph Ball, because I was able to skip Hive Mecha, and if I play my cards right, I should be able to skip the boss here, too. You can just double jump over there. I'm going to do a dash jump over there, because I feel like it. Just pick up the Morph Ball without ever fighting the boss, and good times are had by all. So now that we've completed about half of the Chozo Ruins area in, like, two minutes... Oh, now the boss is going to come out, and normally I'd have to fight it, but screw that, I'm just leaving. And of course the boss music continues to play after you leave, because the game doesn't expect you to leave, because normally you can't. So yeah, this music's going to last for a while. Uh, next thing you gotta do is get the bombs, which I think are up here. So, yeah. <clears throat> Hopefully people are finding this entertaining, because if you don't already know about all this stuff, it's pretty amazing to find out about it. Okay, and we are into the Arboretum, which is an interesting room for later, but I'm not going to be doing anything with it yet. And when is that music going to stop? Okay, there's a save room there. I'm not going to go to it yet, because I want to see if I can get the bombs first. Uh, you can get the charge beam from one of the other doors in that room. I'm not getting it, though, because... It is possible to skip it. Okay, come on, open up. Okay, and the music finally died down. And in we go here to fight the incinerator drone, which I hopefully will be able to do in the two and a half minutes that I have. If not, I can always just pause. It doesn't matter. Because unlike my original setup, each one of these files isn't going to take 11 gigabytes. <laughs> That's, that was a major concern of mine at first, because while I can live with one of those existing at a time, if I have to record a whole bunch of segments in a row, I'm not going to have space for that. Because I only really have a maximum of 40 on either one of my hard drives at any given time. And that's after deleting all the stuff that I didn't need. So anyway, this boss, first boss that you've got to fight, really, aside from the Parasite Queen, and it's extremely easy. Your only hazard is getting hit by the fire, which doesn't do that much damage anyway, and it's very easy to just sort of strafe around it, or just jump over the fire. And I got hit by it there, it didn't really do anything. And you've got to kill the War Wasps, but whatever. This is probably my worst run of this boss so far. Come on. I'm trying to kill this thing. I'm not going to be able to make it back in one minute, am I? 
Probably not. So I'll just pause after this boss. How do I not keep failing to kill that thing? <clears throat> okay, and we now have the bombs. Which can be used for some very tricky bomb jumps, but there's not really any times when you need to do that, surprisingly. Okay, I think that's more than enough progress for one segment. I just got the space jump boots, missiles, morph ball, and bombs in ten minutes. So, uh, next time I guess we'll be moving on to Flagra already. Uh, see you then.